Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy Net, the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent as G Show, where we talk about everything that is new in Gwent. And today, of course, as usual, when a new journey arrives, we're going to be discussing everything that you can find in the journey, discussing what you're going to get, if it's worth the price. I think, considering the character that we're dealing with this time, it's definitely going to be worth the price, but we'll see about that in a minute. Uh, and we're also going to be taking a look at the Sauvin uh, event, so the Halloween event in Gwen. So uh, there we go. The journey is um, yeah, revolving around one of my personal favorite characters in the books, because I want to focus on this. It's, it's a really very good book character. Regis. Regis. Um, the vampire, of course. But yeah, Regis is just just such an amazing vampire. So the uh, the the journey will completely uh, revolve around him. As always, the journey is found on the main menu. You can press on this shiny Regis animated button and you can see the entire journey from there. So the journey, as always, works as similarly to season passes in any other game you've uh, played if you're the first time going into a video like this on my channel. Uh, we're going to be going through each and every single ornament that you can get in this uh, journey just to highlight a bit what you can get with the premium um, path as well because as usual the standard path is filled with reward points and avatars and the premium path is where you can get animated cards the regis leader skin right over here and of course a lot of borders ornaments for your leader skin uh, and card backs and I think there's a few pieces of music in here again as well so a really nice collection of uh, yeah visual elements that you can add to your game. As usual there's also a journey story this time the story between um, Regis himself and of course Detlof, Detlof from the Blood and Wine expansion to the Witcher 3. Uh, I'm not going to go through the story, of course, but it's something that will be evolving over the coming months until it reaches its conclusion in about uh, three months' time. Now, premium, of course, has a price, but as always, it's pretty, pretty manageable considering what you're getting. Because I think this time, again, you're getting four card backs as usual, a bunch of avatars, a bunch of coin skins, and a bunch of borders with a few pieces of music in between. Um, the premium boss itself is around 10 uh, euros but of course it depends on which platform you're buying this on it will be a little bit cheaper if you're going through gog itself um, on the mac version of uh, grant at the moment so that's why it's going through the ios price um, but you can also buy the premium pass with uh, 25 extra levels for almost triple the price which is slightly weird for me and i don't really approve of those um, shortcuts in the premium pass um, but yeah, the premium pass itself is always a very good value and I'm gonna purchase it right away. And there we go with that, both the premium pass unlocks and the uh, green selection color is always kind of manipulatively changing into bright gold. So this is what it looks like when you purchase the premium pass. And uh, yeah, let's start out with the leader skin, the um, Regis leader skin, the human black coat leader skin. It's Regis as you know him from, I think also the books. The outfit is pretty um, pretty matching with the books. Just the um, the barber surgeon as he calls himself in the books. Um, but yeah, he's kind of described as looking like a tax collector. So I think this is pretty apt. But this is of course also the way you see him in The Witcher 3. Uh, the basic avatar is also just him. Emil Regis Terzifrohelic uh, or something like that. There's something, uh, there's another word in there somewhere, but... Uh, there we go. This is, of course, Halloween. We're going to be seeing a lot of spooky elements in there, such as this border, for example, giving you the fog, a spooky lantern, and some bats. So I'm guessing this is going to be the border that will change color slightly in each and every single iteration. Then, of course, we have some ornaments this time. The alchemy pouch, which is very iconic for Regis himself, as, again, the first time Geralt and company meet him, he's uh, basically hiding out in a little shack in the middle of a graveyard where he's uh, brewing some potions. Specifically, um, yeah, some sort of alcoholic beverage from um, brewed from Mandrake. So it's, uh, it's a really, really fun way to introduce the, um, the character. And of course, then the title, as I just mentioned, I totally missed that this was in the first few um, ornaments already, but the title is Barber Surgeon, which is the profession that he introduces himself with. Then the first card back is uh, pretty cool. I think this is one of the card backs that can also be rotated 180 degrees if you go further into the premium pass, but I guess we'll be seeing that later on. 
Again, the cards that you're getting are also going to be pretty useful. I've taken a look beforehand. The cards that you're getting are actually pretty... Uh, some of the more powerful cards in the game. So the first one you're getting is Auburn, the evolution card for monsters, which is a very strong card. And then, of course, the Plague Doctor mask for Regis, which again fits his character to a T. Although it is not entirely correct according to what a Plague Doctor mask would look like, as I don't see a hole underneath the uh, very end of the mask. But yeah, still cool nonetheless. Then a little bit further, the um, yeah, just the, the claws of a vampire grasping a beating heart. But then we get to the most interesting part of this um, journey, because this time we actually got a leader skin that can change forms. Not that it changes forms during a match, but it's not just Regis with a different skin. The animations are different, he looks different. This is Regis as a half-breed vampire. He can actually change his face as well. I don't know why it is not the case here but he should be changing his face into yeah because you can see it here his face is supposed to be looking a bit more beast-like but that's basically the second form of regis basically the the point at which he's enraged his battle stance if he doesn't transform into a full-blown vampire and then of course we also have aura so basically the effects at the bottom of the character's feet that can also be set separately from the leader skin and again we got another evolution card, we got the Nilfgaard evolution card, the Usurper, which is a very strong card in its own right, and you get the animated version immediately. Then coin skins, again, I think there's six coin skins in this journey. Uh, the first one is, of course, the Alchemy, and there you can actually see the Mandrake root, uh, which um, yeah, Regis actually uses to brew that alcohol that I just talked about. And the next skin is basically going into the ghost theme, so his uh, head changes into a ghostly, a ghastly form. Um, basically something that we will be seeing a bit further on as well. And then we get a bit of the music, the dawn music. I mean, you can say a lot about the Grand Team, but they have an eye for uh, adding a lot of interesting ornaments, uh, uh, both visual and auditive, because this music is banging again. It's, it's just really, really good. And then, of course, we get the classic, basically, Dracula-style uh, attire for the normal human reaches. So the um, costumes are, of course, tied mostly to the form. So I think this one you can only set to the human form. Um, next up is the Northern Realms Evolution card, so I think all of them are in this Season Pass, which is, uh, well, I call it Season Pass, the Journey, the Premium Pass. Um, so it's a really good investment if you're looking for strong cards as well. Now we get the Regis and Geralt card back. Not that they ever go... I mean, they kind of do. I don't know what this at the bottom is supposed to represent. It kind of looks like dead Ekimaras, but I'm not entirely sure. Although the arches might mean that this is in the castle at the very end of the story, but the fact that Regis is in his full vampire form would also indicate that, because there's not that many um, points in the story where Regis actually uh, uses this form um, properly, especially with Geralt present. So, but yeah, very, very cool card back. Then we get, of course, the spooky aura, the Red Lanterns aura, I think perfect for uh, Halloween. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go through these a little bit faster because they're starting to repeat themselves like the uh, the Lantern with Bats and Folk. Uh, but then we get Korati Heatwave, another very strong, very useful card in this game and that you get entirely for free if you manage to get this level. And of course you buy the premium pass, so it's not free. But it's a good investment on cards as well, which wasn't the case always in the previous journeys. But this, very good Good card, don't underestimate it. Now we get a mask, we get a mask guest. Uh, I do love his hairdo here, it's like very bombastic. Um, and then there's something really weird. Is this? Oh, yeah, this is the, the final uh, vampire form of Regis. So, full vampire, completely hideous beast. You don't really recognize him anymore, and with some serious booty to boot. Um, but yeah, you don't really recognize Regis anymore in this form. But this is the complete vampire skin. So, basically, the first time we actually get this really monstrous look of a vampire as a leader skin. And that is also included in this premium pass. So, that's why this. Uh, particular pass is so interesting because you basically get, aside from the ornaments, you get three unique leader skins. Um, especially this one, which is really cool if you're playing monsters, because the other vampire uh, skins were that off, which was in his human form, as you see him here. And of course, the Unseen Elder, which is also still rather humanoid, um, which this definitely isn't anymore. 
And we get, of course, a very creepy bat wing border on top of that as well. A few more ornaments. Um, I think, wait, what is this? It's dangerous to go alone human. So does that mean he gets a little sword? Yeah, he does. Continuing on with the evolution cards, we get these Coyotel evolution cards. A uh, bat tornado aura. So basically, if you want to play Batman, this is uh, the perfect aura for you. Skipping through a few other ones. And then we get the Blood Moon music. So a bit more of a creepy set piece um, that you can use as the background for your games. The next one is a human white coat. So basically a recolor of the original coat, but looking a bit more fancy than before. And the next card back is the Grave Walker card back. So basically showing Regis in both his human form at the bottom here and his more complete vampiric form, which is really cool. And I'm assuming since uh, it kind of has those angelic um, statues here that this might be the same graveyard from the witcher tree from the blood and wine or it is the graveyard where they find them for the first time but i'm guessing the former option is probably the case then skelligus evolution card herald on crate a bit more creepy skins for his head yeah that's really bloody that is really creepy. Syndicate's evolution card, of course, is Jacques. You get that as well. We get the Grave Walker aura. So basically, that's another recolor of that uh, first um, aura. So that's a bit uh, weak. And then we got the half breed. So basically, the uh, again that second form uh, with a very very bloody skin this time. Yeah, he went to town on somebody or s or something at least. And uh, yeah, this doesn't really look good. I do. I think it's strange that the avatar here shows his more beastly face and this is just his human face. Kind of confused about that. But uh, And then I think this is probably the most important card that you get for... for uh, well, again, not for free, but you get it in the premium pass here on Aeromancy. Basically the best, uh, most versatile tutor card in the game that is neutral and so you can use it in every single one of your decks. It is just a very, very good card. And it's the animated version, so really, really cool as well. And then a very creepy um, yeah, ornament for his head. It's basically a human mask, so basically the skin of a human that he's torn off and then just, hey, look, I'm a human, while well, he basically pretty much looks like a human already, um, in this form at least. Now, I do love this avatar, by the way. So this is from the um, Sauvin event from, I think, three years ago. By the, around the time where I started doing Gwent videos, uh, I was joking in Team Elder Blood um, in, in our Discord that I really wanted to see a, an avatar of Regis where he was drunk off his ass. And this is basically the closest that we're going to get because he's drunk off his ass on blood. But this is also the point where a few farmers decapitated him and he needed a few years to regenerate from that. But yeah. Um, so yeah, Decapitator Regis, but probably my favorite avatar in this bunch. And then of course the 180 degree change of the Regis the Vampire card back. So basically uh, turning it around. And then the final skin is actually, I feel like, again, a little more different than just the skin. It is the full vampire form, but it is basically a blind version of the vampire. And he's also basically a bit whiter, so gray. Um, with these really weird red spots. I think it's the perfect Halloween skin. It just looks completely disgusting. If you compare the evolution from where we started this, it is just a very cool difference in between those. You can't call them the, the same leader skins. I mean, if you go all the way back, so you have this and you have that. So this is a normal man. And this is a horrible monstrosity from hell that will tear out your innards and wear them around his neck like a necklace because he just fancies that sort of jewelry. Yeah, this, this thing is absolutely horrifying. So again, 100 levels. Um, that is what you need to reach if you want to get everything. And of course, you need to buy the premium pass if you want to get everything. We do have a little less time than we usually have, I feel. I think 80 days is about 10 days less than we usually have. But yeah, we still have 80 days to finish this, so that should be good if you're consistent with your game time a little bit. Uh, and it gives you a little bit of leeway, a little bit of leeway as well. I think you can skip about one or two weeks of, of just consistent play to actually get to the end of this. And of course, you also have the uh, challenges. I don't know. Oh yeah, because I just bought the, uh, the premium pass. You, of course, always have quests as well, but that kind of gives me a good segue to talk about the Halloween event. So the Halloween event, I should probably click this first so you can see what's going on. When you start up the game during the Halloween event, you will be able to choose one of the three um, Witches of Brookback Bog, so the Ladies of the Wood. 
It doesn't really matter which one you play um, like first, all of them will have four challenges for you to complete in order. So as you can see, I already um, pledged my support to Brewers. I've played three alchemy cards in the first match I played this season. And next up, I need to boost units 35 times, then play 10 epic cards and then win two matches. Once you've done that for one witch or one lady, if you want to call her uh, properly there, uh, you can select another one. You get something extra if you complete all the tasks for two and you get something extra if you complete uh, the task for all three of the ladies of the wood. Um, on top of that, you also get rewards for every challenge you complete. So you get 20 crown points for the first one. So basically one journey level and then you get a title an avatar and a card back. There's a card back for each of these lovely ladies and I think you can see them over here. There they go. So these are the avatars and the card back and you get this border if you manage to. I think this is the border you get if you um, pledge your, well, complete the challenges for two of the ladies and this is the one you get for all three of them because of course you can see all three of the ladies around the cauldron in this border. So a few nice ornaments that you can get with this event and it also helps you a little bit in getting some early journey progress because basically they're giving four levels, uh, three levels away for free if you do these challenges. And of course if you want to make even more journey progress you only need to check out the journey tab at the bottom and you can just complete the challenges that will be added every single week there's six every time if you have the premium pass only if you don't there's only three but every single one gives you 20 crown points which is four shy of a single level so as you can see i only played one match um, just to try out the uh, the new settings over here and I already made it to level 3 because of the fact that I got the extra crown points from the Sauvin event and did those two challenges as well. So that goes pretty pretty quickly. Now that's it for this video. I'm gonna not really be talking about patch 9.5 itself because it was basically a balanced patch. Nothing too dramatic happened. Even the stronger archetypes weren't really changed. Uh, a few annoying nerfs, a few annoying buffs. Well not annoying buffs. Um, I I think the nerfs were slightly undercooked, like for example Meditating Mages only went from 4 power to 3 but nothing changed about the ability. Um, I talked about that on Twitter as well, there are a few abilities that I see as problematic that were added in the last card patch. But yeah, there's not much that I can delve into aside from a few provision changes, so it's not going to make a difference. And I can use that time instead to start making more deck guides, which is definitely the next step. I have a few really spicy ideas that I haven't seen anywhere else just yet. They are based on, of course, existing concepts, and it's not going to be super competitive, but I think I'm going to use the Halloween month to make a few uh, very fun, but yeah, you, you can still see them as pile decks but uh, yeah they're, they're gonna be really fun too so keep an eye out for that and that leaves me with just uh, saying you uh goodbye to because and then just thanking you for the support as always uh, i know it's been quite uh, silent on the channel over the past two weeks that was because i was trying out some streaming setups and if you were uh, well present on that stream from last weekend i'm really happy you were but uh yeah that's gonna i'm gonna try and balance both so i'm gonna try and do my deck building on stream so you can check out that process beforehand and now we're gonna still do of course full-blown deck guides on the channel as you're used to um but yeah i always want to do a little video on the journey because i really really like those uh those doing just this and explaining everything and just providing you with a little bit of lore on the characters as well especially regis because regis was only like yeah, he was kind of like a... How should we put this? He was kind of fan service, putting him in blood and wine. He's a really good character. His introduction was perfect in the story. But of course, introducing him um, was basically fan service. Because in the books, he was basically presumed dead. Um, I know they explained that away in The Witcher 3. But uh, yeah, there's, there's something that happens with a certain uh, black-haired sorcerer that uh, kind of ends Regis's life. And if you know what the cards are displaying in this uh, game, then you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, thank you. I'm going to stop rambling now, even though that's the name of my channel. Uh, but thank you guys enormously for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a, leave a like in the, the... Well, using the buttons down below. There's buttons for that on YouTube, apparently. Um, and if you have anything to say what i mean i'm really curious what you think about this journey as always um so let me know in the comment section down below if you have any uh, reservations or any just give me your feedback on this journey we uh, I'll, I'll pass that along to cdpr as well so thank you again enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next video um and which is going to be a deck guide a gwen deck guide so thank you and goodbye
Stay nutty.